What's up guys, Lindsay here, and today I'm going to go through an advanced tutorial of product discovery by Viral Launch. So with product research being such a crucial component of your success on Amazon, we set out to build a tool that enables you to quickly and confidently find untapped product markets for you to enter and really take control of. If you're new to selling on Amazon, or if you're not yet familiar with the basics of product discovery, I'd encourage you to watch our beginner tutorial video first. There, I introduce how product discovery works and the quickest and easiest way to start finding profitable product ideas. The link to that video is in the description below, or you can find it in the tutorial section of your Viral Launch account. But if you're ready to dive into the data, stick with me as we jump into our advanced tutorial of product discovery. So let's get started. All right, so when first starting out, you'll see four methods of searching for products across the top here. This first tab is for finding individual ASINs that match your filters. So the first thing I see here are all of these filters, right? Viral Launch has millions upon millions of Amazon products in our database. So as I input filters, I'm actually narrowing down that database to only show me the markets that match exactly what I want. So for example, let's see that I only want to see ASINs in the baby category that make between 10 and $20,000 per month. I would input those filters here, click show products, and I would get a list of resulting ASINs. This may be a good way of getting a lot of actual products in front of you, but we don't actually recommend using this tab for product research. This is actually a really inefficient way of finding viable product opportunities. So the problem is that if I see that this ASIN seems to be doing well and I'm interested in selling it, that doesn't actually mean that the success of this product is indicative of the rest of the market. I still have a few steps to go before I can even determine whether or not this is a good market for me to enter. First, I have to determine its main keyword. Then I'd have to plug that into a market research tool and start getting an idea of how similar products are performing, how much potential the market holds, and how much competition exists. So this three-step process of finding an ASIN, identifying its main keyword, and then researching the market, it can all be cut down into just one step with the keyword tab. Instead of showing you ASINs, this keyword tab is actually going to show you keywords or markets with metrics that sum up how the average product is performing on page one. And we'll go over the brand tab and the category tab here in a moment, but first I want to run through what it looks like to find a keyword. So there are some presets up top here that I could pick if I wasn't sure how to start, but I'm going to go ahead and pick my own filters. So as Amazon gets increasingly competitive, one effective way of finding products where you can claim market share is by looking for micro niches. So a micro niche is a niche within a niche or a smaller market within a market where I won't have to compete with these big, huge, well-established products. So instead of selling sheets, maybe I'll sell flannel sheets or felt sheets or sheet protectors. I'll show you what I mean. So let's say I'm looking for a product and I'm not too particular on which category it's in. So I'm going to select the preset private label categories, but I know I want this product to sell at least $8,000 per month. And I want my average competitor to have less than 150 reviews. Now I could choose to input more filters, like if I knew I wanted a product with a certain price range, or if I wanted to add any of these advanced filter options down here. There's lots of filtering options so that I can really customize results as much as I'd like. Maybe I know I want to enter a market where sales are much higher than they were last year. And in that case, I could enter a minimum on the sales year over year. Or if I knew I wanted a product that sells best during Q4, I might pick November or December for the best sales period. Maybe I know I want a seasonal product, so I can select that. As you're inputting your filters, customize them as much as you possibly can so that your results are personalized to you. I know that in the keyword tab, product discovery is going to show me keywords that match my criteria, but what I don't want to see are unpopular keywords. So I only want to see those with existing demand or those that people are already searching for. So here I'm going to enter a minimum of 5,000 searches per month. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and click show keywords to see my results. But instead I'm going to filter for a micro niche like I mentioned before. You definitely don't have to fill out this field in your research, but for the sake of this example, I want to show you how this one works. So I'll scroll back up to the top and I'm going to fill out this keyword contains box. When I fill this out, product discovery is only going to show me keyword markets that contain this word or phrase. So let's go ahead and enter a random word that applies to lots of products like plastic. 
All right, so I'll click show keywords. The first thing I'm going to do are flip on the advanced data and sort by idea score. Advanced data will give me just a little bit more information about each result. And this idea score shows me how viral launch rates each of these ideas programmatically. I'm going to use this star rating as an initial indicator as to whether or not I want to look into this market further, but not as an end all be all. So I've got my five star ideas here up top and I see results like plastic spoons, plastic cups, plastic silverware, along with some high level metrics about the products on page one for these keywords. So let's take a look at plastic spoons and see if I'm interested in digging in a little bit further. Now I can see that there are quite a few people searching for this term per month, which is a great start. Average price is kind of low, but depending on my goals, around $14 might be okay. Reviews are below my 150, which is good. Average revenue looks pretty healthy and the sales to reviews is really high, which is great. This means that the number of sales are much higher than the number of reviews on average in this market. So as a newbie seller to this market, that would give me good potential to gather the reviews that I need quickly because I have lots of people buying my product to capture those 50 to 100 views that I would really need to become a force in this market. The sales pattern is typical, which is good if I don't want a seasonal product. Price change looks okay, sales change looks good. So this is looking to be a pretty good option for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this idea, which saves it for me to research further. Now I'm going to pin a few more here so that I have a couple options when I'm ready to validate these ideas. So let's see, plastic cups. Again, a lot of people are searching for this term. The price is a bit low, but revenue is still really high. So the average seller is moving a lot of units per month. The reviews are decent and I think I could catch up relatively quickly, especially with such large sales to review ratio. So this market is actually looking pretty good to me too in the tool. So I'll go ahead and pin that one. Plastic silverware is giving me a warning popular results badge. And this means that a lot of other people who are using product discovery are also interested in sourcing this product. So we built this into the tool because we want to really help you avoid entering a product market that's about to become saturated. So I'm going to go ahead and skip over that one. Some of these results are really similar to the ones that I already pinned, but clear plastic plates looks interesting, especially if I'm interested in sourcing a few smaller products where I can really kill it in each one. Here I can see that there are a decent number of people searching for it right now in the early spring, though the best sales period is in September. The price is really high, which I like, Reviews are pretty low. Sales to review ratio is lower, but really anything around 10 or higher is going to be great. And revenue is a bit lower, but again, I may be interested in a smaller niche. All right, so now that I've got three markets pinned, I'm going to head over to my pinned ideas. Now, I know that I like the looks of these three markets, but here is where I want to really take the time to dig into market research and start looking at the market trends, top sellers in each market, and really just more information to see if this market truly makes sense for me and my business. And I can do that by clicking this open an Amazon button and then running the market intelligence Chrome extension where I can better understand the market's potential with sales and trend data by product and for the market as a whole. All right guys, so that covers the keyword tab, but if you're looking for something a little bit more innovative or if you like going about things in a little bit different way than the average person, you're going to love the brand and the category tabs in product discovery. Now, when I use the brand tab, product discovery is going to show me actual brands that are selling on Amazon. So maybe I wanna find brands that are absolutely just killing it so that I can launch similar products to them. Or maybe I wanna find brands that have figured out really well how to sell seasonal products. There are truly countless use cases for this brand tab. So let's run a search together. Now, let's say I'm selling in the baby category and I want to find brands that are seeing recent success. So there's quite a few different filters here, similar to the keyword tab, but you'll see some new ones. So by hovering over any of these question marks, you can see what each filter is used for. A few notable ones are the brand name, where you can actually plug in a specific brand to see how they're performing, the growth rate, which is a relative measure of how quickly this brand is growing, and then success level, which is again a relative metric. And this one indicates how successful this brand is in terms of their sales. Now, because I'm looking for brands on the rise, I'm going to select good growth. Now, because these first few filters are a combination of many other metrics, I'm not actually going to fill out any of these other filters. 
but if you wanted to play around with the more manual components, you certainly could. So by clicking show brands, I get a list of baby brands that are seeing good growth. Here again, I see overview stats, but this time they're going to be for brands instead of markets. So I can see how many products each brand has, how many units they're selling each month, their success level, and quite a bit more here. And if I wanted to open up that brand on Amazon or save it, I could do so with these buttons. So when I find a brand that really interests me, let's go with Cozy Cover, I'm going to click this View Full Analysis button. Now this page is going to show me lots of high level stats about this brand, which will really help me to get a full understanding of how they performed in the past, where they're at now, and what products are actually driving that success for them. So we've got this average daily sales graph, which is going to show sales across all of their products. Looks like they may have some seasonal products because sales have historically been higher for them in the winter months. So sales are up year over year, which means they're likely taking some action, whether that means launching new products or improving their current keyword ranking or a combination of both. Now they've got 119 products, so they're relatively large. And with this sales distribution graph, I can actually see that their sales are somewhat distributed between their products. In other words, one single product is not driving all of their sales. It looks like for them about 15% of their products do 90% of the sales. So they do have some duds in there. Next, we can see how their average sales price has changed along with their monthly sales information. And I can also see that they're pretty evenly split between vendor, FBA, and FBM which is actually really interesting to me because they're using a mixed approach to their methods of selling and fulfillment. So scrolling through, we can see even more information about this brand. And then we get to this top products and top category section. So here I can actually see which products are driving success for this brand. Now, remember how we said 15% of their catalog is driving a majority of their sales? Here I'm actually able to see which products are doing that. So it looks like they sell car seat covers, which makes sense because they're called cozy cover. But I can see that this black quilt cover is their top selling product. So if I'm in the baby category, and I'm looking for a product to add to my own brand, I can start looking through successful brands like this one and start really reverse engineering their strategy to understand the kinds of products that are driving success for them and that could potentially drive sales for me. So for another use case, let's say that I'm struggling to gather reviews for my own products and I wanna see what other brands are doing to gather reviews quickly. So if I select the private label categories preset and I set a filter for average review rate between eight and 20%, I'll see a bunch of brands that are collecting reviews at a very quick rate. And then I can order one of their products to see if I'm entered into some sort of review collection funnel, or I can check out what their product inserts look like. And this way I have a great idea of what's converting and I can use it to inform my own strategy. Brand search has tons and tons of filters so that you can customize your search as much as you want. And again, this is more of a roundabout way of finding product ideas, but it allows you to uncover opportunities that are truly hidden gems. And finally, our last search method is category. So here I'm going to look for subcategories that are full of potential. Similar to the brand tab, we've simplified things for you. So you'll see these opportunity score and maturity score sliders. And these make it easy for you to find great subcategories. Again, you can absolutely fill in manual filters, especially if you've played around with this tool a bit more. But let's say that I'm looking for a subcategory in beauty with high opportunity and low maturity, meaning there aren't a ton of established products that are making it hard for me to enter with a new product. By clicking show categories, I'll start to see subcategories on Amazon that match those filters. Again, I'll see some high level stats information, like how many brands are in each subcategory, the total monthly sales, and then the opportunity and maturity on a scale of one to 10. If I click into the face subcategory, I can start to see why this market has high opportunity and low maturity. Again, this is more of a roundabout way of arriving at product ideas. So I can open up the subcategory on Amazon and see what the products look like. And I can scroll inside of product discovery for loads of information on the subcategory. This is apparently seasonal, picking up in the summer months, and it looks like sales are pretty well distributed across many different products because this line is relatively flat. Continuing to scroll, there are actually quite a few vendor sellers present in this subcategory, 
which would be important for me to know if I were to think about entering this market. And then down at the bottom, we can see which products are actually selling best within this subcategory, along with which brands are the most successful, and if there are any child categories underneath this category. And from here, I could start to look into the markets for these top products, or I could even look into the brands that are really dominating here. And that covers all four tabs. So before we wrap up, there's a few other things that I really want to highlight about product discovery. This very top toolbar lets you navigate your Launchpad homepage or to your pinned results. Clicking on this flag icon takes you to product discovery for international Amazon marketplaces. This question mark holds resources such as our Amazon seller podcast and a place for you to put any product feedback if you have any suggestions or ideas for us. And finally, this category dropdown allows you to actually find product ideas by drilling down into subcategories, similar to the way you might do on Amazon itself. When you select a category to scan, you'll end up on the full analysis page for that category. All right, guys, so that covers how to use product discovery. Now we found a few product ideas with a lot of potential that I would be really excited about digging into further. Now I would encourage you to get into the tool and try it out for yourself. You do have a few free searches for each tab. So if you create a free viral launch account by visiting the link in the description, you can plug in your own filters to see what kind of untapped product ideas you can uncover. Whether you're just starting out on Amazon and you want to start with a winner, or you're ready to invest in your next product and take your business to the next level, product discovery equips you with the data, the metrics, and the insights that you need. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact our team by shooting us an email at service at viral-launch.com. Happy sourcing.